I'm here in Washuga, Washington at Pendleton Woolen Mills. Let's go take a look and see how blankets and clothing are made. All right, we're hanging out here with Pendleton Mills. Dan, thanks for having us down, man. Thanks for coming. Man, this is great. I love Pendleton Wool. I'm excited to see the process because I have no idea what's going to happen today. That's great. Come on, we'll show you. Let's take a look. All right, we got some wool. Yes, sir. Let's pop it open. Let's go. Whoa. That is cool. This is a bale of scoured wool. OK. So this wool has been sheared off a, a sheep's back. Yep. It's run through hot water and an alcohol excellent soap, which is very environmentally friendly. Yep. And a very good job of wool buying. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And here, and here we are. So every pound of wool that we use needs to be opened and mixed. The opening mm -hmm. part allows it to be dyed better and maybe be carded and spun better. And the uh, when we do end up putting the wool through the mixing equipment for carding and spinning, we put a little bit of water and mineral oil on it. Okay. And it helps with the friction so it doesn't tear the fibers, it's lubricating. Makes sense. So each each of the the mixes, each yarn mix, each uh, dye mix for we're going to Pendleton, all start this way. I'll start as scoured wool, and the purpose is we're gonna blend them together, open them, and make them a much more friendly fiber to start putting dyes and spinning on. Well, here we are in the back of the cards. This is the first place this bale you just saw mixed would go into the process. Okay. The idea here is that we're going to be making the wool, we're going to parallel the fibers as much as possible in preparation to make roving okay. to spin into yarn. Okay, so what is this doing right here? So in the, in the process, well, what I explained earlier is we're really looking for having the fiber homogenous. Yeah. So we've spent a lot of time with the first three workers in the back yep. blending. The challenge is even more, we're going to lay this sideways and blend it again. Okay. The purpose all the way along is, is to drop vegetable matter and really drop the fibers that aren't going to make a very good quality yarn at the end. Got it. Okay, so that just basically high grading it one more time. High grading it, yep. You can see the two rubber belts moving yeah. back and forth. This is to put that little half a twist to keep the yarn segment separate. These are each called cheeses, okay. internal term. Yep. But we're gonna build the roving spool with the cheeses to a certain amount of yardage, which we record. And the idea there is we're gonna make one tube of yarn from one coil of, of roving. That makes sense. All right, what's our process here? Well, in spinning, what we do is we put twist on the yarn to help its tensile strength. What we do it is, is that we have a pinch point here and a pinch point there, and the yarn is being twisted in the middle. Okay. And the idea is, is the continual flow of yarn to build a nice tube and good quality. All this new equipment, man, this is great. How much yarn can this kick out? Well, there's 330 positions on three machines on this side and 160 positions on two machines on this side. Poundage is kind of tough because depending on the size of the yarn, it could weigh a lot more or less. We look at it in yards and uh, it's more than I can count right now. <laughs> uh, I love it. We're, we're producing typically about 160,000 pounds of yarn a month. Wow. Which kind of adds up to that 2.2 million pounds of wool that we consume a year. All right, what's our next process? Well, to make fabric, there's two things you need. You need a warp, and you need the fill yarn to go between. This happens to be our warp dresser. Okay. This one's a brand new one. And it's the idea is putting, as you're making a plaid, you need to be very specific on how your yarn is laid out color to color, position by position. So when you put the fill in, that you make the plaid that, that looks like the plaid right here. As promised, here's yep. the warp on the loom. As okay. you can see in this case, the warp is solid okay. in color, and we're going to put the color in in the fill. Okay. These are air rapier machines. The yarn is taken halfway across, and then pull the rest of the way and cut. 
And as that operation is happening, the, the, the yarn is coming back to the front and repositioning itself. The edges of the fabric, where the potential problem with quality is, is, is cut off. Okay. This is shredded and reintroduced in a non-woven uh, business on the East Coast. Oh, cool. So it's recyclable, nice. which is what a great story for wool is. It's 100% recyclable, biodegradable fabric after weaving needs to be visually inspected and that's where we're going now all right let's go take a look all right we've got a really cool thing here going i love this this is gorgeous well this is a, a plaid one yeah. of one of those umatilla plaids that we make and one of the things that we're looking for are flaws in the fabric we could find that a, a yarn had jumped over and mm -hmm. created a, a flaw both in the in the warp which is the long way and the mm -hmm. fill that comes across this way Sometimes the machine might have had a problem and the operator would have had to make a knot. Okay. All these things initially are tagged on the outside edge. And if we run more than 10% of this fabric looking at it that it would have a flaw in it, it would tend to direct a different direction for a seconds program. If this fabric is deemed good enough quality to continue the process, this will go ahead and go into the finishing department which is our next process for this fabric. All right, I see some beautiful stuff here. This is starting to look good. Yeah, it's, it's almost there. Yeah. Now the magic happens. All right. So we've gone through weaving. We've decided that the cloth is in good enough shape to continue the process. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this fabric is pretty open and weave. Yeah. It's pretty light. So the first thing that we'll do with this fabric is what we call pulling. Run it through hot water and soap okay. and pull and tug on it. And what will happen is, is the weave pattern will continue to tighten up. And okay. what you'll have is a nice, dense piece of fabric that then you can start napping and shearing to put a nice face on it. Finishing is really where the magic happens in, in this part of the mill, because you can take something that feels, I'd have to say at this stage, pretty ordinary. Mm -hmm. And by the time we get done, you want to go grab it and put it on your bed. So uh, first thing we'll do is we'll feed one of our folding machines. All right, Dan, we got a cool part of the process here. It looks like we're doing the laundry. We do, and it is. Uh, <laughs> so the fabric comes in pretty loosely woven as we were seeing over at the pile. The opportunity here is, is to use water and soap surfactants, and we're gonna put a little friction on the fabric to a point where it starts pulling the fabric together and making a more robust, stronger piece of fabric than we started with in a woven width. So we're taking a woven width and putting it down to a fold width, which then we can dry, nap, and shear with the rest of the uh, finishing process and get the desired product that we want. But the first process after the fabric inspection to make sure that it's proper is to go through a pulling process, which is really just pulling and pushing the fiber and the weave together to make a denser, uh, better quality fabric. Yeah, just tightening up a little bit. Just more robust. There we go, I like it. All right, Dan, what's the next process? Well, we're still in the middle of creating magic. Right. And so the next thing we've done after we've carbonized the vegetable matter out and dried it is to try to make a nice face on the fabric. And how you do that is you take basically metal brushes and you lift the fab fiber up and shear it. And this is the start of that piece of equipment. So it's loaded basically flat. Yep. And inside there is a large metal roll with wire wrapped on it, mm -hmm. along with some other rolls that are guiding it through. And the process is, as you can adjust, is how far to raise up that fiber before you shear it to make a nice pile, to make that beautiful feeling fabric that we're after. That adds that softness then, That's right? the softness that you feel. And this is the start of that production. Each one of these fabrics has, has got a standard. Mm -hmm. They're they're looked at for, for color, for width. They're looking for any blemishes in the fabric that would not make it shippable. If they find something that looks like a blemish or a flaw in the fabric, they'll tag the edge. So the cutter and sewer will know that there's a flaw in that area and has a potential to, to move around it. Great. All right, Dan, looks like we hit the end of the line. We're here. And this is our final report card of how well we've done. This is a beautiful piece of uh, Umatilla fabric that will probably end up in a spring wear line mm -hmm. the next three months. Uh, from, from this position, it will be covered in plastic, tagged with the right code, 
sent to a cut and sewer who will uh, cut and sew our product. This is uh, truly the, the work of 250 people in this mill. It, it, everybody has a little bit of touch to this and uh, we're very proud of it. And they should be. I mean, you guys have done a great job. I appreciate you having us out here today, man. How do people find you guys? Because you're everywhere. Well, we're not everywhere, but we do have around 40 stores that nice. you'll know as Pendleton stores or Pendleton label. We also have a website, and that's www.pendleton-usa.com. And we have catalog also. If you send us an email, uh, they'll send you monthly or quarterly catalogs for our products. Thanks, Dan, for having us out here today. This has been absolutely amazing. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Pendleton Woolen Mills, made in the Northwest, right in your own backyard. You got to come check it out.